It's been almost six months with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, two weeks into having the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I did a video where I discussed my thoughts two weeks in. I'll put a link to the video over here if you'd like to see that. And I figured I'd give you an update six months in if I still stand by the same thoughts that I shared back then or if my point of view changed with time. So let's get started. Let's start off with the elephant in the room, the weight and size of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which usually comes up as one of the more important points people think of when considering this phone. So in my review two weeks in, I was coming from a smaller phone from the iPhone 12 specifically, and I did note that the jump was very significant in terms of weight and size. There was that shock factor as soon as you hold this, where it feels much heavier than the iPhone 12, and it actually is. But I also said that you would get used to the size and weight. In a way, I stand by that statement in the sense that that shock that you first feel when you move to a larger and heavier phone obviously is gone. However, it is heavy and big. Now, having said that, if I go back in time, would I make a different purchase decision? Absolutely not. Despite the heftiness and the weight of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I would still choose it any day over the smaller iPhone. And keep in mind, this has been my daily user for the last six months. It is my primary phone. I use it every day. I do have the iPhone 12 still as a secondary phone. And in the rare occasions that I do use it, yeah, I first thing I say to myself is, wow, this is a very small screen. So uh, for me, at least, I would sacrifice, you know, the uh, lightweightness and the small size and form factor of the smaller iPhone for this awesome big display. Of course, it might be different for other people, and that's totally valid, where you would prefer having a more portable, pocketable, lightweight phone than a larger screen. Some might even argue if you want a large screen, get an iPad. I'm going to go into that debate, but all I'll say is it is a bit heavy and cumbersome, especially for one hand operation. It's not the easiest to operate with one hand, but it is definitely manageable. And again, I wouldn't trade it for a smaller phone despite those inconveniences. And yeah, I, I, I feel it most if I'm using it with one hand or if I'm wearing uh, basketball shorts or going to the gym and I have this in my shorts. I also have that one particular jacket with a chest pocket that this barely fits. It just fits, but barely. At moments like these, I do wish it was a bit smaller, but again, I would not trade for a smaller phone uh, despite all of these inconveniences. Uh, the screen is just gorgeous. And in my opinion, once you get used to working on a larger screen, uh, going back to a smaller screen is a bit annoying, but again, it might be different for you. Now I want to talk about the Dynamic Island, and that was one of the more exciting additions for me going into the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And uh, six months in, I can say I still love it. However, it's not as useful as I would have hoped it would be. Having said that, I cannot imagine not having the Dynamic Island or going back to that boring notch. So um, I wouldn't particularly buy this phone for the Dynamic Island, but it is something that I can't imagine not having. In terms of usefulness, I've used it the most and really appreciated it the most for the shortcut abilities that it gives you. So if you tap on the Dynamic Island, it quickly jumps you to whatever app you're using. If you're on a phone call, I really like that you can always see the call timer in the Dynamic Island, but then also just tapping on Dynamic Island jumps you right into the phone app. Or if you're listening to music, you can tap and go into whatever music app you're using. I also really appreciate when using a countdown timer, for example, that you can always see at any point uh, the countdown timer in the dynamic island. Uh, it's it's really nice to have, and I, I really stand by the fact that I think it's it's really smart design. 
merging hardware and software into a user-friendly and useful thing. Uh, but the usefulness, I'm sure, will increase with time. And I, I really appreciate Apple's attention to detail there. So uh, when you're listening to music or uh, are in a phone call, there's that sound wave, which is actually synced to the music or the, the phone call. When you use Face ID or AirDrop, you get that little animation, which is really nice. Another really nice thing that I really appreciate is when the AirPods connect, you can see that little um, animation in the dynamic island, which is quite useful if you have multiple eye devices. So when I wear my AirPods and I have my Mac, my iPad and my two iPhones next to me, and I see that animation on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I know the AirPods are connected to the 14 Pro Max. So that's, that's really nice as well. So summary on the dynamic island, a bit less useful than I thought, but wouldn't trade it, love it. And I, I do think it's gonna be the standard moving forward, at least until they figured out how to embed the face ID and the front cam under the glass. Uh, probably the iPhone 15 will have the dynamic island as a standard, even on the non-pro models. So uh, yeah, that's on the dynamic island. Next up, I want to talk about the cameras and the, again, one of the major things, the 48 megapixel sensor and the cameras are great. Uh, low light photography is awesome. I really appreciate the two times zoom, which is enabled by that 48 megapixel sensor. That's really nice to have. The only thing I don't like is the minimum focus distance on the main camera has increased from the 13 Pro, which means that the phone switches to macro mode more often than I'd like. And that I found a little bit annoying, especially if you're scanning, uh, let's say in a grocery store, scanning prices or barcodes. I've also had instances where I was shooting videos and then just uh, getting closer to a subject. So yeah, that part is annoying and uh, it's the first time that it is that pronounced uh, with the iPhone. I haven't felt this uh, issues with the previous iPhones. So that's on the cameras. In terms of battery life, I mostly get a full day's worth of battery on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, unless I'm really using it heavily throughout the day. As I said, it's been my main phone for six months. And in terms of battery health, it's at 99% capacity today, uh, which is fine. And now to the always on display. I think it's one of those features that are nice to have, but I really wouldn't miss it if it was gone. And in iOS update, Apple later added the option to turn off the wallpaper display, which I think was a really good addition. It saves on battery life and uh, I don't think you need the wallpaper to be always on as well. You can also turn off notifications from the always on display. I mostly, to be honest, use the always on display just to glance out the time and to see the battery of my uh, Apple Watch, to be honest. Beyond that, I don't think it's that useful. Wouldn't miss it, but I like having it. So to sum up my thoughts six months in, I really enjoyed having the iPhone 14 Pro Max as my primary phone. Uh, sometimes I do wish it was a bit smaller and lighter to be more pocketable, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I enjoy the large screen, the large display, which is gorgeous. And uh, yeah, as I said, I can't imagine going back to a smaller phone. Now, if you're thinking of purchasing the iPhone 14 Pro Max today, and that's going to be a tough decision given the fact that you're literally in the middle of its life cycle. So um, in about six months time, the iPhone 15 will be released. It's a tough call, I would say, unless you really need a phone right now, I would wait it out to see what the iPhone 15 brings. Uh, there's the USB-C charging, which I'm excited about, but also rumors are starting to surface in uh, what we're going to see in the 15. So unless you absolutely need a phone today, I would consider waiting to see uh, in six months what Apple brings. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments section what you think of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And as always, if you like the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers.